Most prisoners are dangerous to some degree, but the people in this video will make even the most hardened criminal you've ever met look like the most altruistic of do-gooders. These are 20 most dangerous prison inmates in the world. Number 20. Fabian Kramer Now you might be a little uh, weary to label someone as absolutely evil, but I promise you there are going to be entries here that are going to change your mind on that thought. If you want me to prove it right away, well then I'll tell you the story of Fabian Kramer. Fabian Kramer is a man from Germany who is very much locked up, but the first of many twists is that when he was arrested, he was only a teenager. And his crime? Well, it was the murder of his landlady. Now you could insert a, well, everyone wants to kill their landlord at least once joke, but uh, you need to just trust me when I say that jokes are definitely not appropriate in this situation. Because when this very deranged teenager decided to kill his landlady, he did it in a truly twisted way by wearing the mask of Jigsaw from the Saw franchise. And apparently he did this out of pure murderous lust. Sadly, it does still get worse because not only did he do this act, no one really knows why, and no one really understands why he was influenced by the first Saw movie, but he was, and that would lead to his terrible crime, of which he was 100% guilty, and he would then be thrown into prison as a result. This prisoner is a classic example of one of the many prisoners that are feared by everyone and are still alive today. There are plenty of tales of bad influences from the world of media and entertainment, but horror movies usually aren't up there because of how they're meant to be terrifying, not inspiring. Yet, as they say, to each their own. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. This guy is one of the prisoners that are most feared by everyone and are still alive today. The man, whose name I'm not legally allowed to share, was imprisoned in Russia, locked away in a high security prison. Not much has been made public about what he actually did, but what we do know is that he escaped from regular prison 20 times. That's why he's been locked up so severely. If I were you, I'd be terrified of the guy. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag Sweet topic. Number 19. Donald Harvey. Next up, we have Donald Harvey, another person who is very much a monster and in a way that nobody can truly full well know. The reason that I say that is because Donald Harvey was a serial killer, a good and true one, but if you were to ask him how many people that he actually killed during his spree, it would honestly be a lot more than what was confirmed by those who were tied to the case. Now, according to Harvey, he killed 87 people, but the officials of the case would state that it was more likely to be between 37 to 57 people, which, if I'm being honest, is still a whole lot of people to kill. It does make you wonder why he would say one number that could have immediately been proved, though that could just be part of the game to keep people guessing until the very end. Sadly, however, things only get more twisted from there, because at first, Harvey would say that he would start killing patients in a hospital as a mercy, even smothering them with their pillow to ease their pain. Eventually, though, he became a true angel of death for no other reason than he honestly just enjoyed killing people, and thus would continue to do so because he had no reason to stop. By the time that he was caught and put behind bars, there had already been a lot of loss of life, no matter whose numbers you believe, and as a result of the ones that he could be tied to, he was given 28 different life sentences. The only reason he wasn't given the death penalty is because of how he admitted to the murders. As a result of that, he died in prison, though some likely will never be satisfied with that in the end. Number 18. Charles Bronson now, no, I'm not talking about THE Charles Bronson, you know, the guy from the Death Wish films and other action things, but I'm talking about a man who became known as Charles Bronson, aka the most violent prison in Britain and one of their most violent criminals ever. but it didn't start out that way, which makes him all the more ironic. First arrested as a simple petty criminal, he would be convicted and sentenced in 1974 to seven years imprisonment for armed robbery. 
Additional time was then added due to the attacks that he made on prisoners and guards. Loving his violent streak, he then became a bare-knuckle brawler and actually changed his name to Charles Bronson after the actor. But despite that, he went back to prison after trying to do another robbery and was known as a violent inmate and had taken numerous hostages in the course of confrontations with guards, which resulted in his sentence later being changed to life in prison. People were so desperate to figure out why this man was so angry at, well, everyone, that he was sent to not one, not two, but three different psychiatric hospitals, and the condition that he was diagnosed with was that he was simply unwell. Not exactly the best way to talk about a guy who can do all of that. And you would think that perhaps they could just dig a little deeper on that one. Another irony of this is that he was studied profusely and even written about in books, of which he did interviews, and noted that he was actually a nice guy, but then at times he loses his senses, and that's when all the bad things happen. One final irony for you is that his life was actually turned into a film called Bronson, where he was played by Tom Hardy. The bigger irony, as if he were somehow played by Charles Bronson, but oh well. Number 17. Eileen Wuornos Now, here's a very curious case about an atypical kind of thing that you hear about, a female serial killer. But for whatever reason, there honestly haven't been that many documented in history, but the few that are, are very curious women indeed, and Eileen Wuornos is just one example of that. You see, she was a working girl, if you get my drift, and she would use that trade to try and get everything that she could in life in its early parts. This would be brought on partially because of the very traumatic childhood that she incurred, not the least of which was being abused by her grandfather and her father in various ways. So, in a way, she was taught to be like this, and she used it to her advantage. Eventually, she found herself married to a wealthy businessman, which in many ways should have been her way out, and many believe that she did try to take that path, but it all fell apart and that's when the real Eileen would arrive. I say that because through her working girl routine, she actually killed the men that she slept with. Though when she would be arrested for it, she claimed that they had tried to assault her, and thus all of the deaths were actually in self-defense, which is an interesting turnaround of the situation. She would then be sentenced to death via lethal injection in Florida, just the tenth woman in its history to get that punishment. The public's fascination with Eileen led to her story being told loosely in the movie Monster, where she was portrayed by Charlize Theron, and then she won an Academy Award for her performance. Number 16. John Wayne Gacy from a famous female serial killer to arguably one of the most famous killers of all time, while he was a clown, this is how things like it get made, and I'm not happy about it. John Wayne Gacy was known as the Killer Clown and is easily one of the most infamous people in history due to his crimes against teenage boys and how he got away with it for so long in terms of the public perception of him. Because if you were to ask people about John Wayne Gacy just one day before he would be arrested for his crimes, no one would have believed you that he was a torturer of boys and a serial killer. Granted, his record before he began his killings was full of warning signs, but then he seemed to straighten himself out. By that, I mean that he bought a house near Chicago, became an independent contractor, and he would actually do charity work as Pogo the Clown. But this would just lead to him getting closer to his prey, and as the friendly neighborhood clown, he would be able to lure boys into his home where he would handcuff them and do unspeakable acts to them before eventually murdering them, usually via a rope trick, as he enjoyed telling them. All be told, when he was done with his killing spree, he would amass 33 victims, an insane amount, and when his story was fully told, it truly sparked an infamous legend about how you really don't know your neighbors, and you have to be careful with whom you trust, even if they're as innocent looking as a man in clown makeup. Number 15. Rodney Alcala 
All of these people have various twists in their life in one form or another, like how they did their acts or who they were underneath of them. For Rodney Alcala, he had a twist that he was a very famous one because he was a star on television in his own way. Now, you may remember the show The Dating Game. Basically, a couple of eligible bachelors would be hidden from view with a female looking for love, and through questions alone, she would decide the winner. Alcala was on the show, and he actually won. But the twist here is that at the point in time, he was already under suspicion of murder and charged in one act, meaning that he was going to be eventually tried. Yet he was able to go onto the show and actually win. But wait, there's more. The two people who headed up the show, a husband and wife duo, disagreed about whether or not he should actually be on the show. Not because of his record, because they had no way of knowing about that at the time. Rather, they disagreed about what he was. One of them saw him as an attractive man that the ladies would love, and the other saw him as someone with a strange personality. Would you like to guess which one of them thought which thing? Well, wrong answer. The wife actually said that he was the attractive man, and the husband thought that he was strange. Like I said, the twist runs deep here. A successful photographer, Alcala, would often lure women and girls by approaching them on the street and offering to take their picture before attacking them. Now, while investigating the murder of one of his victims in 1979, investigators found hundreds of photographs in a Seattle storage locker that belonged to Alcala of unidentified women, girls, and boys, as well as jewelry that was believed to be trophies from some of his victims. He would eventually be sentenced of the murder of four women. Number 14. Pascal Payette Now we'll go for something a little more lighthearted, because for the French criminal known as Pascal Payette, he was dangerous in prison because he was the kind of criminal who would always try to escape. You know, not the one to set roots in a prison. But his trick that he always loved to use was that he was very fond of helicopters. Yes, really, in multiple attempts to get away from prison, he would actually use helicopters to escape. For example, in October of 2001, he escaped from a prison in the village of Lunez in the French department of bouche du rhone on board a hijacked helicopter, and eventually one of his accomplices would be captured and brought in for questioning. Then in April of 2003, Payette organized another helicopter escape, this time with a man by the name of Franck Parletto, Mikel Valero, and Eric Alborio who had all been arrested with him in 1999. Three weeks later, they would all be captured again. So on one hand, none of his prison escapes ever lasted all that long, but then you just have to note that he did at least try to do it in style, and it did work for a little while. But if you were to look at this from an objective standpoint, his premise for getting out was flawed from the beginning. But why? Well, because helicopters aren't all that inconspicuous. If he tried to do this these days, with all the modern technology that exists, he'd be caught in days and not weeks like some of his escapes. But hey, he did have a gimmick and he stuck to it, and that's something noteworthy. Number 13. The Eyeball Man just so I can dispel any fears that you may have about hearing about this particular prisoner, no, he was not called the eyeball man because he took the eyeballs of his victims or did various things with eyeballs in general. He actually had a tattoo over his eye and that led to the nickname. Anyways, the person that I'm talking about is named James Barnum, who is a rather low-key criminal given who we've already discussed on this video, but his crimes were meaningful nonetheless. Back in 2012, officers were investigating a string of burglaries and came across a hotel where Barnum was staying. Instead of cooperating, he hid in the bathroom and shot at the officers. This would lead to him getting attempted first-degree murder charges, illegal possession of a firearm, and the burglaries that were mentioned before. He said that he did the thefts in order to feed an addiction that he had. Further explaining his behavior, Barnum deflected some blame to the Alaska Department of Corrections, saying that he left prison in 2010 with nowhere to go and nothing to do. He was simply living on the streets and actually tried to get a job, but his face did not allow him to do that. Now, I'll leave the beautiful face bit alone for now, but note that while blaming the system is something that most would roll their eyes at, he's not wrong that many in prison who leave are simply left with nothing, even if it's petty or smaller crimes that were committed. So thus, it all escalated, and the result was being incarcerated for 20 years in prison. Number 12. The BTK Killer 
Going back to the pure evil side of criminals, we now take a look at another infamous serial killer, one that many of you likely have heard of via the BTK killer. BTK was an abbreviation that the killer gave himself as it meant bind, torture, kill. Now you all know the rules of nicknames, right? You're never allowed to give yourself one, but this guy didn't care. And that's just one of the things that made him so very evil. His real name was Dennis Rader, and his legend was one that many are taught so that they can know the face of the man that hurt so many. Between the years of 1974 and 1991, Rader killed 10 people in Wichita and Park City, Kansas, and sent taunting letters to police and newspapers actually describing the gruesome details of his crimes. This was, ironically, his undoing, because after he went quiet, he then lived his life freely up until 2004 when he began to write the letters again. This would lead to his capture in 2005, and you may be asking, how did he stay away from the law for so long? Well, remember John Wayne Gacy? Well, this guy did a similar act. A family man, government worker, and church leader by day, Raider was smart enough to blend into his community and avoid detection for the string of victim stalking and killing. He was smart enough to walk away back in the 90s, but just could not resist the urge to come back. And when he did, he gave the police enough evidence to catch him and then put him away. Stunning a community in the process who were at one time very close with the BTK killer, he would end up with multiple life sentences for his crime crimes. Number 11. Charles Manson now there's a name that shouldn't require a whole lot of explanation. Charles Manson is one of the most infamous killers in history, mainly because of the influence they would have over other people and their willingness to do whatever he wanted them to, even if it meant committing murder. But not unlike many on the list, he didn't start out as a monster. His life was fraught with troubles between his family, who he did not fully know, and his personal decisions. But it was when he began to create the family that things started to take a darker turn. He would use various beliefs and psychological triggers to basically make people believe that he was a prophet, and that in an upcoming race war, anyone who was in the family would be in a position of power when things began to fall apart in the world. Now you could say, oh well that sounds crazy, but it did work, and that led to his family doing killings in his name. The most famous victim would be actress Sharon Tate, the wife of film director Roman Polanski, who was killed in her Los Angeles home along with three other guests. Eventually, Manson and his family was caught, but he was spared the death penalty due to an abolishment of the process. This led to him being studied much more and led to many adaptations of his life story, not the least of which was the book Helter Skelter. Number 10. The Red Ripper now I'll take you abroad to a serial killer that definitely had the nickname to match his violent streak. The nickname The Red Ripper was given to Andrei Romanovich Chikatilo, who during his spree went and killed at least 52 women and children between the years of 1978 and 1990, and he also did various things to their bodies that I'm just honestly not going to mention. He would be convicted and sentenced to death for all 52 murders on October of 1992, although the the Supreme Court of Russia would rule in 1993 that insufficient evidence existed to actually prove his guilt in nine of those killings. But even if you take all of those out, it's still more than enough to put him to death for his treachery across the then Soviet-controlled Russia. And in 1994, he was finally put down like a dog. Number 9. Nico Jenkins as grim as it may be, we'll keep the serial killer talk going on by talking about Nico Jenkins, a man who killed four people in Omaha, Nebraska in 2013. Now this one happened just a decade ago, but that doesn't make it any less terrifying. Are you waiting for the twist? Well, here it is. He had just gotten out of prison for the crime of carjacking, mixed in with some incidents in prison, and he wasn't even out for a month before he then killed four people within a short span of one another. And thus comes the twist. Jenkins would state that he had committed the killings at the command of the ancient serpent god Apophis. No, that really was his defense, if you want to call it that, and he was actually found to be competent enough to stand trial, and so he did and was found guilty and then put to death in 2017. Number 8. Michael Swango 
This one definitely is a bit twisted for various reasons, as Michael Swango was a serial killer who used his position as a physician to kill as many as 60 people. But not only patients, as you would expect, he apparently also killed some of his colleagues as well. One of the twists here is that he only admitted to four of the deaths, and it was through these ones that he was convicted and put away. But that's a lot of loose ends to be tied up. Another twist is that he was doing these acts at times as an intern at Ohio State State University, and multiple nurses would come forward to talk about the things that ha they had seen with him, and they were dismissed as being paranoid. Way to go, Doc! He was only arrested after getting a job at a hospital and having poisons found within his possession. Number 7. Timothy McVeigh now, I'm not going to mince words about this man because you all likely know who he is. Timothy McVeigh would be the man behind the Oklahoma City bombings that killed 168 people, 19 of them which were children, injuring more than 680 others when he set off a bomb that destroyed one-third of the Alfred P. Murrah building in 1995. The attack, which is considered domestic terrorism of the highest order, was said to have been done to inspire a revolt against a tyrannical government whom he blamed for some many people dying in places like Waco and the Ruby Ridge incident. He was eventually tried and sentenced to death for his crimes. Number 6. Alexander Pachushkin now, you'll notice that a lot of these serial killers have a nickname attached to them when they get really high kill counts or have done things in particularly violent or clever ways. Well, for Alexander, he's one of those guys that was the chessboard killer. Apparently, he suffered a traumatic brain injury when he was just a child, and that would lead to a life that he later lived where he killed nearly 50 people the first of which was just a boy when he was a teenager. The reason for his nickname, though, was that when he was caught, he had a chessboard that had inscribed upon it the dates related to the murders that he committed. All but two were filled in. Now, here's the real twist, though. His crimes were actually so heinous in the eyes of the Russian government that they wanted to reinstate the death penalty just for him. Number 5. Ted Kaczynski Another man who honestly needs no introduction because this is the infamous Unabomber who blew up various buildings and people all in order to try and send a message to the world and it was a message that would eventually get him caught. One of the twists with him was that the message he was trying to get out, a recluse himself, Ted Kaczynski was a man who lived off the land and hated the fact that the world was growing more and more dependent upon industrialism and technology and thus felt that the world was being ruined. So in some ways, he had a great message about trying to preserve the planet, it's just that he wanted to enforce it by blowing things up for the span of about 17 years. It was only after his words would be published that his undoing was had, when his own brother revealed that he might have been the Unabomber. He was sentenced to multiple life sentences without the possibility of parole. Number 4. Mark Chopper Reed Mark Chopper Reed is a very unique individual for both the right and the wrong reasons. He's the definition of a career criminal, having began his various acts in his teenage and young adult life, which would lead to him leading a street gang known as the Surrey Road Gang. While according to him that he didn't kill that many people, he absolutely didn't mind brutalizing them in incredibly efficient ways in order to get what he wanted. While he was eventually undone, he still got a lot of fame, not the least of which were writing some my autobiographical books and doing a lot of interviews when he was out of prison, which included one by 60 Minutes. Number 3. Jeffrey Dahmer now, I'm not gonna lie, Jeffrey Dahmer kind of freaks me out even though he's gone now and some of his crimes are so terrible that I'm not even gonna go into detail about any of them. What I will say is that he was another American serial killer who was convicted of killing and doing various acts to the bodies of 17 men and children, and you'll thank me later for not actually talking about it. Anyways, one of the biggest questions that's been given was his acts and whether or not he was actually crazy. He certainly had the M.O. of a crazy person but the court said that he was actually sane, so he went to trial, was sentenced to life, and then was mercifully beaten to death by another inmate in prison. Not the ending that you probably expected. Number 2. Lobster Boy 
Now this is definitely not what you're expecting because this is the story of Grady Stiles. He had a genetic condition in which the fingers and toes of his body were fused together to form claw-like extremities, and so he performed under the name of Lobster Boy. Due to his condition, he had to go around in a wheelchair for most of his life, which would make his arms and hands incredibly strong. And when you add that to his resentment over his condition and the outbursts that he would have, it's actually no surprise that he was violent to his family and others. So much so that he actually killed his oldest daughter's fiance on the eve of their wedding. But wait, there's more. Because of his condition, he could not be sentenced to prison, so he was simply placed under house arrest. Number 1. Thomas Silverstein Finally, we have a man who is so violent and evil that he's the longest held prisoner in modern history in regards to being put into solitary confinement and not being let out. At first, this may not seem like a thing that you'd give to a man who killed four people. That is until you realize that these four murders happened inside of the prison itself. One of them was a guard, and the man just so happened to be a leader in the Aryan Brotherhood, of which he tried to remake the prison to fit his visions of things, and that's where people drew the line. So much so that when he was locked away in solitary, many of the guards actually refused to talk to him out of the respect for the one he killed. And that's all from the realm of prisons and the inmates that are still very much residents within them. Did hearing these stories truly terrify you and make you realize there's evil out there in the world? And which of these inmates would you be most afraid to meet in person? Are there any others that were left off of my list? Be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.